Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's me, Raul Alejandro Mendoza, or the Nerdy Chicano. Either way, how you say it, it's all good here. And of course, we're back for another installment of Between the Frames as we look at the Trilogia de Guillermo del Toro box set from Criterion. Of course, still banged up. Sorry about that. Not my fault. But, uh, of course, I want to thank you all so much for enjoying the last video as we talked about Kronos. And, of course, remind you all, if you like content like this and want to be around here for the long haul so that way you can see more content about physical media, make sure you go ahead and subscribe to my channel, leave a like on this video, and turn on that notification bell when you're subscribing. That way you do not miss a single lick of content coming to the channel, of course. Uh, I want to thank you all so much. You know, it's been a lot of fun making these videos, and we are ha well halfway-ish through because we only have three movies on this box set. So... Uh, we're we're almost done with this box set, but next 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 video We're gonna talk about the next one which is Pan's Labyrinth and then I'll tell you all what box set we're looking at next hint It's not a criterion also hint. It's not in my back of My wall here. It's not on my on the shelf here So of course before we can get into any of these things We need to go ahead and look at that introduction from criterion.com. So let's go ahead and pull that up all right, looking at the Criterion.com introduction here, one of the most personal films by Guillermo del Toro. The Devil's Backbone is also among his most frightening and emotionally layered. Said during the final week of the Spanish Civil War, it tells the tale of a 12-year-old boy who, after his freedom-fighting father is killed, is sent to a haunted rural orphanage full of terrible secrets. Del Toro expertly combines gothic ghost story, murder mystery, and historical melodrama in a stylish melange that, like his later Pan's Labyrinth, reminds us the scariest monsters are often the human ones. And of course, this is presented in a Blu-ray disc, and it's a new restored 2K digital film transfer supervised by director Guillermo del Toro and director of photography Guillermo Navarro, with 5.1 surround sound DTS HD master audio soundtrack on the Blu-ray edition. It also includes some cool stuff like an audio commentary featuring Del Toro, video introduction by Del Toro from 2010, new and archival interviews with Del Toro about the creation of this film, Que es un fantasma, a 2004 making of documentary, interactive director's notebook, four deleted scenes with commentary by Del Toro, and a lot more stuff here, y'all. I mean, I was actually really surprised when I opened this one up and I went to look at the supplements to see what I was working with here. There's a lot of supplements on this movie. It's probably one of the one of the best, like, packed on the Criterion Collection because it gives you so much special features. But, of course, uh, this is Guillermo del Toro's third film. Uh, of course, this is the second in the box set. This is a Blu-ray box set, and I watched this on my... 4k player my Panasonic 4k player so it's gonna be upscaled just a bit more and of course I watched it on a Samsung 4k TV with HDR and doesn't come with any of that stuff but of course um, that is the technical specifications what do I think about the devil's backbone well uh, I think this is one of Guillermo del Toro's most underrated work uh, this movie is freaking awesome I mean first of all this movie looks great uh, they, what's it called, uh, the cinematography is fantastic, especially just having it pretty much shot on one little, one location. You really don't move past that location. You're only in like the orphanage and you never really move past the orphanage. Unlike uh, Kronos where I think there's like five or six locations that they, that they, it's set in, but this is literally just one place. And I love the film. I love the child actors and their performances are good and uh, I think that the film has a beautiful strong sense of like friendship and what it means to be brothers and what it means to look out for each other especially during wartime when families are being stripped away and dying and it's uh it presents a really interesting narrative about you know how what war does to poor chil to children who have to be relocated and uh I really, really like the uh, the score that's provided here. Once again, Federico Lupi is in this one as well, and um, he does a great job, especially as like the caretaker, but also like the father figure to all of the um, the kids here. Um, there's also, you know, our villain who's just the fucking biggest piece of crap ever in this film, and 
uh, the way that he's just a womanizer and he just doesn't care about these kids and ultimately just wants to kill them and take the take the gold. And it's just it's 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 a great movie. I think it's one of Guillermo's best, and I think that's also one of his best of his first like four films. Um, you know, I, I of course Pan's Labyrinth is fantastic, and that movie just is a masterpiece in all of its right, but this is a movie that I think is highly underrated when it comes to Guillermo's uh, filmography. And I think that you kind of need this film to kind of branch into where Guillermo goes into like films like Hellboy and uh, The Shape of Water and, um, and the, even, hell, I'll say it right now, even Nightmare Alley. A lot of stuff that's done in here, he kind of does again in Nightmare Alley and it's really interesting. Uh, but. I like this movie and I think that it's a very, very, very uh, interesting look at the Spanish Civil War, especially because the next one, you're kind of looking at the Civil War itself, not really, you know, the last days of it. So it's really interesting that that's what Guillermo chose to, to concentrate on. But yeah, I, I really love this movie and it's my second time watching and I just, I always, I always love watching it because it's just so special to me, especially being from one of my favorite directors like Guillermo. So um, I just, I enjoyed this one a lot when I was watching it. Now, let's talk about the restoration. Wow, man, um, this restoration is fantastic. I mean, those colors are popping like crazy. The red, the yellows, the oranges are all popping really well. And I love this restoration. Uh, I think the picture quality looks fantastic in 2K. And I can't even begin to imagine what we could possibly see if we got a 4K of this. But this looks fantastic. I think that it works really well in keeping preser in preserving that grain to it. So it can give it that look from when it was made. But also, I just love the way that those night scenes play out now with this restored version. And they look so well done. And you know, I remember um, seeing stills of what it looked like before, and it was a vast improvement. Vast improvement, and um, just, it looks amazing. Um, there's also, you know, a nice little contrast there where you can really tell now, whereas before it was kind of hard to see it, but this film just does a great job. They did a great job of making sure that all those colors were well preserved and make sure that they pop when they need to pop and they stay muted when they need to be muted. So they did a great job. And of course that was gonna be possible because it was being supervised by Navarro and Del Toro. And honestly, who else can do great work but the people who worked on them to make sure that these films look as great as they should. Now, the soundtrack, the, uh, the audio track, wow. Um, last week's, on Kronos, I talked about how like there's not much of a big difference. It's you know it's crisper, but like there's nothing great there. I watched this on an actual surround sound system, and this actually has surround sound now. This is a 5.1. This sounds fantastic. I mean, you could feel those like gunshots, and you could feel you know like whenever they would go into the water, you could hear that so crystal clear of like when they would jump into the water. Um, the audio track sounds crisp, it sounds well done. I love that you kind of fix up the original version of the audio track and still add something new. You know, like I always say, it, not everything needs Dolby Atmos or Dolby, um, that, the Dolby um, 7.1, but when you can take the audio track and still do something well with it while keeping true to what it was before, it still sounds fantastic. And I loved every instance of that in this film, in these films, in this film, because it sounds great, and it also does a great job of making sure that everything's like the score and the soundtrack all still all still sound uh, crisp enough, and like you can understand what's going down. But I love the surround sound, and it was a nice little bit of an extra kick to it that I'm glad was included in the film. Of course, if you want to go ahead and stay up to date with all the things that I do on social media, make sure you follow me everywhere at the Nuri Chicano, Twitter, Instagram, Letterbox, Serialized, all of that wonderful stuff. You can go ahead and follow me at the Nuri Chicano. And make sure you keep up to date with all the things that I'm doing on the Nerdcore by going to the Nerdcore.com. We are doing a lot of fun stuff right now. We're going through a film month uh, looking at films directed by women. 
And then on the on the um, website side of things, where I'm doing a Gaspar Noé retrospective series, and I'm also reviewing some films that I've watched as of late. So go to nerdcore.com so you can check all of that wonderful stuff out. And of course, uh, make sure that you keep up to date to all the things that are going on here, y'all. And uh, if there's any updates, you know, I will let you all know. But um, we also, I also have a giveaway to announce soon. I think I'll be doing that on the next video when I talk about Pan's Labyrinth. But uh, in the meantime, it's been a lot of fun. And I'll go ahead and see you all next week when we look at the final film in this box set, Pan's Labyrinth, the best foreign language winning film from Guillermo del Toro. And in the meantime, make sure you all stay safe. And of course, my renowned cinephiles and scholars celebrate the love of cinema today, tomorrow, and every day after. See you on the next one.